Hello, everyone. God bless you. Pastor Dave with you here once again. Uh, we welcome you to our weekday devotion. Hope and pray that you, as always, you and your families are doing well, continue, continuing to trust in God in everything that you do. Uh, and as always, we hope and pray that today's devotion will be of a blessing to your life. And, you know, each and every time that you watch it, each and every time that, that, that you listen to it, I hope that, that you know, I pray to God that it will be of a blessing to your life. Um, I hope everybody had a great Fourth uh, of July weekend. Hope and pray that, that that you know you were with your families. You enjoyed everything, and and you know ju we just need to continue to um, ask God for for our country. Ask God for a country that the Lord will just um, do what He needs to do. Do what He needs to do to and and help us as a church to be able to to take that 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 firm stand within our country to be of a blessing to the, the, that we may stand up and we may be of a beacon, you know, uh, of light in, in, in that darkness that, that, the, that, the, that the world and the, the, our country may know that us as a church, uh, we haven't faded back into the shadows, but we're, we're up front where we should be. So, amen. Um, as I said, it's our weekday devotion and uh, I'm going to read out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word of God is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to the even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart you know uh, every time that, that that we open the word of God we have to understand and realize that exactly what it says here that the Word of God is alive and active. The reason that we know is alive and active, that even though it was written so long ago, and yes, it was written by man, but it was Holy Spirit inspired. Man was the one that physically took the 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 the, the quill, the pen, whatever, you, however you want to say it, and, and, and wrote down what we have now as the Word of God. But it was Holy Spirit inspired. But the reason that we know it is alive and active is the fact that God's word still changes lives. God's word still impacts lives. God's word still is effective in doing what it's supposed to do and what it was meant to do still today in 2021. And it will always be. Why? Because as, as his word says, that God's word, that the word of God is alive and active. And I love how it says it's sharper than any double-edged sword. And it penetrates, dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So that's exactly what the word of God does. It, it, it penetrates to the deepest part of our, uh, of our hearts, our soul, our minds. And, and, and it, it, it shows us. It shows us what needs to be done and, and, and how and what we need to do. Uh, as far as what the Word of God says, you know, and, and there's there's a couple of ways, there's several ways that that we can benefit from from reading because honestly, we're the ones that benefit. And I know sometimes, you know, we get so caught up in our day and we get so caught up in everything that we're doing that. Uh, and there's people. I'm I, I'm more than sure that there's people that would rather be doing something else than reading the Word of God. They'd, they'd rather be watching TV. They'd rather be out and about. They'd rather be doing this, you know, than reading the Word of God. And and I've even been told, Pastor, you know, I, I, I read the Word of God every night before, you know, as I'm going to bed. And I said, oh, praise God. And, and then, but then they turn around and say, yeah, because it helps me sleep. Well, you know, that, <laughs> that, that in itself shouldn't be the reason why we read the Word of God. We should read the Word of God for guidance, we should read it, God, you know, the Word of God to know and see what it is that God wants for us and what God has for us, you know. And, and we need to pray before we read it, and, you know, and just say, Lord, you know, help me understand everything that I'm going to read, and 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 even afterwards that we may ask the Lord and say, Lord, allow me to apply and help me to apply everything that I just read. But if I can. If we can continue on, uh, as, as I said, you know, ways that we can benefit from the Word of God. And we're going to be reading out of James uh, chapter 1. I'm so sorry about this. James chapter 1. Uh, and we're going to read verses 19 through 27. We're, we're not going to read them all at once, but we're going to break them up in, in, in the devotion today. And again, don't want to take up too much time, as I, as I always say. Um, 
in James chapter 1 verses 9 I'm going to read 19 through 21 to begin uh, you know to, to continue on on this devotion and it says my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you first of all we must be receptive to God's word the way first of all the way that we can benefit from God's word is that we need to be receptive we need to in other words we need to accept God's word anything that is said we cannot and I've said this before I know I've said it here I know I've said it at other churches and God has allowed me to be a pastor at I've said we cannot treat the Word of God as a buffet whatever kind of buffet you like you know whether it's Chinese whether it's Mexican whether it's seafood whatever 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 kind of buffet you want but we cannot treat it as a buffet what does that mean that we pick and choose because I don't know there may be very 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 few people here on earth that will go to a buffet and literally take everything some of everything that is there on the buffet no most of us if not everybody goes to a buffet and they're like oh yes this i like oh no that i don't like and then the what are what we really like in the buffet we we like pile it on and we we might even say you know what i think i need a, another plate but we cannot treat the word of god that way we cannot say oh no that i don't like so i'm i'm not going to i'm not going to allow that to you know to come in i'm not going to receive that or if we don't like what is being preached, what is being said in a devotion or being said in a sermon, we can't say, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to accept that. Because you know what? It's the Word of God. And more than anything, more than anything, if, and I'm going to use the word in Spanish, si nos cala, if it bothers us, if it kind of like, Ugh, then guess what? The Word of God is doing its job. It's doing its job because we just read that. It says everyone should be uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, and become uh, and slow to become angry. It's because human anger does not produce the righteousness uh, that God desires. It says, therefore, get rid of any moral filth and evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. There's times that the word is spoken, and we're like, oh, it makes us uncomfortable, and we're kind of squirming in our seats here in church or wherever it is that we are. And it might not, it might not even be the pastor here. It might, 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 you, know, you might be listening to a sermon on the radio. You might be watching something on TV, wherever, or you might be in another church, wherever it is that you are. And the sermon hits, and you're like, oh man, and you're looking around like. Does everybody know that that was about me? Does everybody know that was for... Nobody knows, but we know. And the Word of God, as we read at the beginning, is doing His job. It's cutting in as a double-edged sword, penetrating, splitting bone and marrow, as it says. Because that's what it does. And the fact that it does that, we have to be receptive. If we want to benefit from God's Word, we have to be receptive. We have to be receptive. Why? Because it says here in, uh, in verse 21, in James 1, uh, verse 20, chapter 1, verse 21, it says there at the, at the end, um, and accept, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. If we want to be saved, we have to accept God's word. We have to be receptive to God's word. We have to say, Lord, it, oh man, it, 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 it really made me uncomfortable. It really like digging in. But I accept it because I know it's your word. I accept it. Lo acepto. I accept it, my God, because I know that it's you speaking in my life. And I know that if it bothers me, then, then that means that there's something in me that shouldn't be there. And your word is doing its job. So if we become uncomfortable, we're not, we shouldn't blame the word of God. We shouldn't blame whoever's preaching, whoever's speaking, whoever's saying whatever it is that they're saying. We need, to, we need to look inside. We need to examine ourselves and say, hey, you know what? Well, what is it in me? Why, why did it bother me so much? Why did, it, why did I feel so uncomfortable? Why? Because maybe we have something inside of us that the Holy Spirit is telling us, is moving in us and telling us, hey, there's something in there. 
So we need to be we need to be obedient and we need to be receptive to God's word. Moving on to verses 22 through 25. James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25. It says, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourself. We've read this verse before. It says, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word and does not do what it says is someone who looks at his face in the mirror and then and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Verse 25 says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law and gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So the first thing that we said is that we have to be receptive to God's word. We also have to submit ourselves. We have to be submissive to God's word. Lord, I submit myself. Yes, I'm going to do. We accept it. And then we say, yes, I'm going to do what your word says. Look what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourself, but do what it says. Don't, be, don't, don't just be hearers, but be doers of the word. We have to. Because you know how many people are out there? I've known of people that have read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation and several times, and they brag about it. Oh, yes, I, I've read the Bible many, many, many times, many times. And you know what? They could probably even quote you a scripture. You tell them, you know, a, a, a scripture verse, and they'll, they'll, they'll say it. Now, my question to them is, okay, cool, awesome, amazing. You read it. How many times? So many times? Awesome, great. You can, you can quote me a scripture just like that? That's... That, that's that's so great. So my question to them is, are you applying it? Are you applying it to your lives? Are you being receptive to that word? Are you submitting yourself to that word? Are we submitting ourselves to God's word? We have to. We can't just be hearers and not doers. Because the word of God says, then we're just deceiving ourselves. We're not, we're not fooling anybody else. We're just fooling ourselves. And if we think we're fooling God, trust me, we're not. God sees everything. God sees everything. God knows everything. God knows every thought that goes through our head. God, God hears every word that comes out of our mouth. God knows every action that, 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 that we do. God sees everything that we see. So we not only need to be receptive to God's word, but we need to be submissive to God's word and allow his word, not just receive it, but submit ourselves and say, yes, Lord, I will do what your word says. I will do. If your word says to turn away from evil and turn, then I'm going to do that. If the Bible says resist the enemy and he will flee, then in the name of Jesus, I'm going to resist the enemy and let him flee away because God is with me. Because the Lord is going to be with me and the enemy, the only thing he can do is just run. If his word says greater is he that, it, that is in me than he that is in the world, then I'm going to trust in God. If his word says, fear not for I am with you, fear not for I am with God, then I need to submit myself to that. We also have to submit ourselves to, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we also have to understand that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We need not just to be receptive, but we need to submit ourselves to his word. We'll end with this, verse 26 and 27. It says, those who consider themselves religious, listen to what it says, listen to what it says, those that consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue, deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans, widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. As I said, we'll end with this. We spoke about being receptive 
to his word. We spoke about being submissive to his word. We need to allow the word of God to move us. To move in us and to move us. We need to, we must be moved by God's word. Moved. Que nos conmueva, that it just move, that it just stir something up inside of us. Because, you know what? Now, now more than ever, now more than ever, believers need to stand up. Believers need, as I mentioned at the beginning, believers need, to, the, the church needs to stand up and take its place. Take its place in the forefront, not, not back in the shadows and, oh, well, we don't want anybody to tell us anything. We don't want, you know, anybody to come to the door. We don't want anybody. No, we need to take the forefront. We need to be out there. But the only way that we're going to do that is when we allow, first of all, God to move in us, submit ourselves to God and, and say, Lord, here I am. But if we do not submit to his word, if we're not receptive to his word, if we don't allow his word to move within us, then what good is it? If, we're, if we just listen and we don't do, we come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and we think that's enough. Just because you sit in these benches or you sit there at home and you say, well, Pastor David, I, I listen to you, but are we doing anything about it? Everything that is said from behind the pulpit up there, from down here, are we doing anything about that? What the Word of God says, not what I say. I don't, you know, that doesn't matter. What the Word of God says. Are we doing anything about that? That is the evidence. That is the proof that we have submitted to God. And we have allowed God to move in us. And we, sub, and we, we, we become receptive to His Word. We submit to His Word. And we allow His Word to to move in us and move us because if we don't and if we leave this, this place the same way that we came in the problem is not with God the pro problem is not who's up here the problem is there so what are we doing what are we doing we want to benefit from God's word. If we want to benefit from our relationship with God. Things need to happen. When we pray, something needs to happen. And if we pray and nothing happens, if, we, if somebody asks us for prayer and nothing happens, it's not on God's side. It's here. Be receptive to his word. Be submissive to his word. And allow his word to move in us. Allow ourselves to be moved by God's word. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We thank you once again for everything that you've done in our lives. I thank you for your word. Powerful, mighty, alive, effective. That it's still touches and impacts lives changes lives I thank you for your word because it's a guide your word my Lord God guides us your word says that it's a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path we must allow it to be that light and that lamp help us we can't do this alone when, when the enemy comes and, and, and life itself comes and tries to take us away from spending time with you in prayer and spending time with you in, in reading your word, my Lord God. We rebuke all that. We, re we rebuke all that. Allow us and help us, my Lord God, to be able to spend time in prayer, to be able to spend time in reading your word, studying it, receiving it, being receptive, submitting to it, and allowing your word to, to move us. Oh, I know that you have great and mighty things for us. It's, you have it, so many things in store for us. Lord God. Great and mighty. More than we could even imagine or even think about. But I ask you to help us. I ask you that you 
you may do your will in our lives. You may do your will in our church. As I said, that we may move to the forefront and stop being in the shadows. And we may do something. So I thank you, as always, for what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to continue to do in our lives, our homes, and within our church. In your holy and precious name. Praise God. I'm so glad that, that you took the time to be able to watch and listen to this devotion. As I said before, hope and pray was of a blessing to your life. Don't. I hope you didn't take it too much as, man, pastor really scolded us. No, to take it as an, as an encouragement. Uh, even if, I'll even say it's a challenge to allow God's word to move in us, that we may be receptive, that we may submit to it. Okay, I'm done preaching. I'm not going <laughs> to... So as always... Have a rep that this rest of the week that you have may be a blessed and victorious one. And as always, we'll see you here once again on Sunday. Be blessed. And if you can't make it out here uh, to, to our service, then we'll see you here on YouTube. We love you and God bless you. Bye, guys. And my shame is up.